Hello everyone, I am Kamal Das, the Dean of Wadwani Institute of Technology and Policy. I have over two decades of experience in analytics, machine learning, finance and operations across the globe. I am sure you have heard about the Internet of Things or IoT. But what is IoT and how is it different from the Internet we use? In this short video, we will discuss what the Internet of Things or IoT is. We will share some use cases and examples that will help you gain an awareness of the potential of IoT. This will enable you to appreciate what IoT can and cannot do currently. And in addition, we will share some interesting facts of what IoT and its current communication network. Let's start with the official definition of IoT. The Internet of Things Global Standards Initiative defines IoT as a global infrastructure for the information society enabling advanced services by interconnecting physical and virtual things based on existing and evolving interoperable information and communication technologies. The definition is a bit difficult to understand, isn't it? Let's simplify it. As discussed, you and I often use the social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These are social media that we humans use all the time. This social media is based on an internet for human to human interactions. Social media can connect humans with each other or internet for humans. Similarly, imagine another parallel internet that enables things or devices to communicate with each other in which one thing or device can interact with another thing or device. This internet is called the internet of things. In summary, IoT is a communication network or internet for things to communicate with each other. IoT is a network of things or devices that can do one of the following three things. Number one, you have a sensor that can collect information and send it. Number two, you have computing resources that can receive information and act on it. Number three, you do a combination of both sending information as well as acting on information that you receive. Here are some interesting facts about IoT. There are more IoT devices than humans today and we have more than 46 billion IoT devices as per Juniper research compared to around 8 billion human beings. Even in India itself, we have over 2 billion IoT devices as per NASCOM which is 50% more than the Indians. Very interesting, a huge number of IoT devices. How do they communicate? Using mobile numbers, of course. We humans in India communicate with a 10-digit phone number. The Department of Telecommunication has migrated machine-to-machine -machine communication using 13-digit phone numbers from 2019. And these current digits have a special scheme as depicted in the image. This just tells you that how much more is an expectation that IoT will continue to grow and more connected devices will be part of the Internet of Things. Now let's move on to some use cases of IoT. The first use case we will discuss is automated street lights. Earlier, we used to have a specific time band during which street lights would be on. The lights would go on from, let's say, 6 to 7 p.m. in the evening to 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning. This led to wastage of electricity during sunny summer months. On the other hand, in dark and gloomy days because of rain or in winter times, sometimes the lights would not be on in the dark. With IoT or Internet of Things, we can have sensors that detect the ambient sunlight. Based on the details from the ambient sensors on the amount of light, the IoT will switch on or switch off the street lights conserving electricity while not compromising on security. We may also use IoT with motion sensors. What will a motion sensor do? It will detect the motion of people or any animal. The sensors will be triggered and the light would come on. It is very much like the smart lights that we have in our houses right now. We switch on and off based on our movement from one room to the other. Similarly, there are applications for IoT in irrigation and farming. Earlier, one would water each plant 
by the same amount or by the perception of the farmer. But now we can put IoT devices in the ground. This will enable us to see the moisture content in the soil. If there are some plants that have grown a bit larger or the soil absorbs more water, then the IoT sensors will make the irrigation devices release more water in that area. Other areas where there is more moisture and perhaps shade from the trees and less sunlight and the plants are not absorbing as much water because of different growth requirements, IoT will reduce the water supply. This will make the water supply more effective. This can lead to a lot of water conservation and better water utilization as well as better plant growth. Now we can move on to some examples from our life. Testing for driver's license. Many of us may have applied for a driver's license and taken a series of tests to display our driving skills. Nowadays, many cities are using IoT in the automated testing tracks. Such driving tests use IoT are possible in a number of cities in many parts of the country. This makes the assessment more accurate without the need for human judgment and bias in driver's evaluation. And this is not a new use case. In Gandhinagar in Gujarat, IoT was used from 2013. So we have a lot of use cases that are being used in India with IoT. Let us talk about another use case, one of my favorite, the never emptying refrigerator. Let us imagine we have a fridge. It has sensors to identify all the items. And whenever your eggs, milk, or mushroom are out of stock, the fridge will send a message to a voice assistant to order from Amazon, Flipkart, or Big Boss. And these e-commerce websites will deliver the items to you. No worrying about when the fridge is empty and your time and memory are not taxed as your fridge will autofill itself based on the requirements. How great this would be, correct? Unfortunately, this is still a flight of fancy. This is not a product that you can buy during an e-commerce sale event as such a refrigerator is not yet there in the market. IoT is not yet advanced enough for this. One reason is that for this to work, we would need to store all the items in a particular place all the time. And this is when the sensors will read the quantity of each item and know where each item is kept. However, typically we do not do so and keep changing the location of many items within a fridge, except perhaps eggs, which are typically kept in the egg holder. In case the location of items is changing, sometimes it is kept in one place, sometimes another, we would need to use computer vision to identify each item in addition to IoT to make this never emptying fridge become true. Given the packaging, often items are in boxes or other containers, computer vision of items within a fridge is a struggle. As a result, this is not something that is possible today. But in a few years, who knows? This is something you and I can look forward to. Having a fridge that never empties and auto orders whenever it needs to. Hopefully, today you have an appreciation of what is IoT and can define it to your friends and colleagues. You will also be able to share some use cases and examples of IoT in India and explain what IoT can and cannot do. You're also aware of some tidbits of IoT. There are more IoT sensors than humans in the world and they have more digits in their phone numbers than we do. We hope you enjoyed the video. We look forward to you viewing more of our videos on emerging technologies, including the detailed longer set of videos that will give you a lot more insights on IoT and other emerging technology. Thank you and bye.